Good evening, everybody. This is Dwayne Hale, and we're doing the Reseller Six Pack Show on my channel this week. Um, we're going to be talking. We're going to be letting you guys ask the questions, and, and we'll be giving the answers for the most part, depends on how personal y'all get. So, <laughs> what do you? What are you drinking and who are you, Tanya? Hey, everybody. I'm Tanya, Thirsty Treasures here on YouTube, and I'm having a strawberry abita. Very nice. Very nice. With a strawberry. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's got to coordinate over there at the Sheets house, so. That's all right. <laughs> what about you, Shane? So I'm Shane, the Rising Grind Picker. I am on YouTube. I have an Instagram, um, and I'm drinking some Corona Extra, and no lime tonight. <laughs> what about you, Shane? What about you, Andy? How you doing, everybody? I'm Andy, the Parrothead Picker, and tonight I am drinking Oscar Blues Death by Coconut Porter. It's Ooh. like dessert in a glass. This stuff is amazing. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it looks good. No, yeah, it sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, it's, they, this is a, actually like a pretty limited beer. Uh, they did this last year. I remember getting getting a hold of it last year, and they just re-released it. So come out in some four packs. So uh, yeah, I quick snatched up uh, one of these. So I'm gonna I'm. I'm sa I'm savoring this one. Oh man, it's even a nice dark color. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's delicious. It, it literally tastes like a like a coconut cake. I mean, it's it's so good. Oh, I want to get some. <laughs> it looks kind of like an almond joy in a can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a big coconut fan, but man, this stuff is oh, it's so good. I love coconut. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Cool. And Mr. Lonnie. Damn, my beer, I'm, I'm drinking, okay, I'm a Lonnie, also known as Garage Flips on YouTube, guys. <laughs> um, my Yingling Yum. is like really, I thought it was like really good, but then whenever I heard about uh, Andy's beer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, what is this shit? I mean, golly, he's got like coconut and all this other, thing. <laughs> he's got a strawberry and all this stuff. <laughs> golly. But yeah, hey guys, glad I, glad uh. Glad I could be here with you, uh, Dwayne. Thanks for hosting, bud. Ah, sure, no problem. It's my turn. So, um, so this week we decided to just let it open it up to the, uh, you know, people in the chat. Uh, basically, we ran out of things to talk about, so you know, this is always the go-to thing. Hey, when, uh, hey, who is this royal oh, we that you keep referring to? I, I'm never running out of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, this is all Lonnie's fault. Um, so. <laughs> well, you, the problem is you didn't anyway. ask me, right? right. You, were in, you were in freaking Disneyland. Oh, that's right. <laughs> she was? Dude, she's been back for like, what? Yeah. No, I, dude, she got back like on the weekend I, last weekend, I think. Uh, right? Tuesday night. Oh, Tuesday? See? Yeah. <laughs> oh, just this past Tuesday? <laughs> Yeah, isn't that right? No. Or is it? Okay, maybe it is. Okay. Anyway, we we didn't have the uh, the <laughs> the brain cells of Ta Tanya to give us a good no. thing, so I came up with this cheesy thing, okay? <laughs> but you're going to like it. All right. <laughs> so, um what was I going to say now? See, you threw me completely off the train, man. I'm sorry, sorry. dude. I, you know what my plan is? Like Scott says, I'm just going to keep drinking until I think it's a good show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> until it's a, I'm going to keep drinking until the show is pretty. <laughs> abort. Abort. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not there yet. We're gonna get there. Hey, weren't, weren't, weren't the uh, killers going to join us tonight? I, no, I, I asked them to. I don't know if they can do it or not. Uh, I asked them if they could make it on a killing spree, are they? Yeah, right. <laughs> so oh, okay, um, they say they will come in. So let me uh, let me send them the link. That'd be cool. All can't, right, do it. They can't cl clean up the crime scene fast enough, right? <laughs> so um, if you guys, if people are interested in asking questions, make sure you preface the questions with question marks in the chat so we know you, that it's a question. Um, how do you guys want to do it? Do I mean, do we want to just answer them as they come in or do we want to go by person? You know, anybody that has a question for Andy, do you know, just so that it's not all monopolized or something? I don't, I don't know. know. How, who, who's goat is this anyway? 
Uh, this is your channel. They're my channel, your show. Uh, no, this is not my show, dude. This is, <laughs> your, <laughs> this is your goat tonight, buddy. We we already discussed that it's always your fault. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, Lonnie, you drink enough, you can twerk. <laughs> Double round. Yikes. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, like I said, if you have any questions in the chat, go ahead and uh, preface them with some question marks, and we'll. Um, I'm pretty much open to answering most anything. I mean, without getting too crude, but uh, you get up for some. Um, Dwayne, somebody asked in the chat. I sorry, I can't remember who it was, but I have to scroll up. Hmm. How you are feeling after last night's show? And I think they're referring <laughs> to all the fireball oh. you had. Yeah, yeah, I did drink a little, uh, a little last night. So, uh, slept well. Um, since I shaved <laughs> off all my, my stuff here, I can actually put my mask on and it works. So, um, Wait, what'd you do? You shaved your stuff? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we all. Hey, man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, um, yeah, no, I, I felt actually okay. So, no, I didn't sleep on the couch. Come on. My, she was right here next to me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it was it was fine. We, I don't know. For some reason, Fireball does not give me a hangover. I mean, Lonnie, you said it last time, too, that when you when you had yeah. some, you wake up and it's, it's really not that bad of a hangover. No, no. I, I mean, I had to drink, drink a couple of glasses of water because I was dehydrated, but... I think it's magical, dude. Like I, I drank, I think, probably about a half bottle of one night. Yeah. Man. Shit. The, I mean, I felt, I felt fine the next morning. I didn't feel like I had drank. I know that's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> it's like magic. If those guys are watching this, then uh, we might be able to work something out as far as sponsorship goes. You know. For sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I gotta send my wife the link so you guys talk amongst yourselves. Okay, so there's a question in the chat already um, from Linda Dunn. Do you change? Oh, this is a good one. And let's let's try and make these some quick hitters, guys, and we can all do it. Since uh, do you change address after payment or send to someone other than the buyer after payment? Go, Andy. What? <laughs> no, Andy. Okay, now what, what, okay. What is the qu the question? Is do, do I change the address after payment? Right. Like or if somebody say, says, "Hey, I gave you the wrong that wrong address on my PayPal account. Can you ship here instead?" What does Andy do? Oh man, uh, that's actually a pretty good question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, usually for me, um, I will usually write them back. Um, just to double check. Um, that way I have it all on record um, for the change of payment. That way then if there's some uh, issue or whatever, but I always try to double check, you know, get like a, a double verification on the uh, change of address. Um, like I said, that way then if there's some issue or whatever, uh, eBay will see that and then they'll, they'll cover me if something happens with the package or whatever. Um, but as, as long as they confirm it and said, yeah, I really, I need this to go here. It's for a gift or usually they'll give you some reason or whatever it is. And then I'll go ahead and I'll change it. But, um, usually I always say, you know, um, I, I actually usually try to get them to, um, uh, just change it themselves and that way then I can print it out. But if they say it's like for a gift or for some other reason, whatever it is, um, then I'll go ahead and change it. But I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and then, um, yeah, okay. like I said, I'll do it that way. Shane, what That's about you? I do it. So for me, um, it just really depends on the item and the price of the item. <clears throat> so I've sold, you know, some 10, $12 things where you really got to kind of weigh the buyer, their feedback score versus the risk. So risk versus reward. So if it's $10 and I really have nothing in the item and they ask me to, yeah, I'll do it just to keep the sale. And what am I going to lose on a $10 item? I'm into for $10, nine cents or less, you know, <laughs> $10. Yeah. $10. But yeah. you know, I've sold like, like t-shirts before where they paid $59 and they PayPal'd me and they bought it and then they messaged me and said and I said, Hey, 
I know it's a lot, but if I refund you, can you just repurchase it and change your address? And the couple of people I've done it to, they're like, oh, absolutely. And they don't know how to do it. They, they probably get and I, stuck. And I, yeah. yeah. And I, and I walked them through how to do it and they were left me awesome feedback. Okay. So you do it based on how you feel and price the item and stuff. What about you, Tanya? Yep. I do as I'm told. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was a 50 shade reference. <laughs> um, I don't That's understand. That's a good one. You got me. <laughs> I don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, unless eBay says that you're not supposed to do it. Do they say that? Well, I think the, the, the big deal is people uh, want to make sure they have um, seller protection still in place. Oh, so okay. Ship, yeah. That's well, the whole point. I mean, yeah, like Andy said, as long as it's documented and um, eBay can go back and see the messages, the correspondence, I, I definitely, you know, want to please the customers, so I would do what they asked. Okay, yep. Now, I'm the same way. Like, uh, I do it like Shane does. It's based on price of the item, but really, I sell so many items that are, like, under 50 bucks. Like, I, I think my threshold would probably be 50 bucks. If it's over 50 mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna cancel sale. You change your address. You repair all that stuff under fifty. As long as there's not anything weird going on, I'll just, I've done it like every time. I've probably done this thirty times, and I've never had wow. any kind of scam or anything like that. So, uh, and like Kurt says in the chat there, as long and I've heard this a bunch, Chicago Crown Hustler. As long as it's in through eBay messages, and Andy said this too, you're still protected under eBay's buyer seller protection at Garage Flip. So, yeah. What about you, Dwayne? Hey, just, just, uh, I'm sorry. I, I want to I uh, address something you said, Lonnie. I want to double check. Did you say that you cancel the transaction if it's over 50 bucks? Yeah. I thought, I thought you said that you, so you'll just straight out cancel the transaction. Well, you have to. You, you have to like, um, or refund the payment or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, because because it goes to different. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I think yeah. when you cancel it, it gives an option of. Okay. Uh, oh, because it, yeah, an address. Yeah, there's an uh, option for uh, address change or different or, address. Or yes, something. Address. Yeah, yeah. There's something you can do, or. <laughs> or it's like buyer request address. Yeah, change. buyer request is mm -hmm. one of them. Yeah. Yep. You guys are right. Yeah. I mean, I, I have I have done that. I was just I was just kind of curious on the over fifty dollar thing. Yeah. Uh, if I had heard you right, that, that you canceled on automatically over 50 bucks. Pretty much. I mean, that's, a, that's, you know, I'm, if I have one for 54, I might still do it. Well, you know, whatever. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <You> right. <know>? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Go ahead. For me, I've only had it happen one time. So, um, and I just corresponded with the, uh, the buyer through eBay and we worked it out and it was just for a gift. Um, so I, yeah, it's not happened to me very often. Um, I, I think a, I think a lot of buyers don't know that they for like, for like that one transaction they can change their address to whatever they want, right? Right. <laughs> right. They, I think they don't know that. Yeah. Or or they don't think about it. They pay and everything, and it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to send it. I and I think the one that did it for me um, is they the, the what happened with the transaction from when yeah, um, they had changed it before to go to their like parents house and then when they bought it for me it's like oh crap it's still on my parents house can you send it back you know this is my real address and i'm like so hey amazon seller uh 99 in the mm -hmm. in the chat over here did you, did you guys just read that just uh, read says it. yeah yeah it says uh i think ebay will protect you but if they file the claim with paypal uh he says they don't think that the paypal guarantees shipments to any other address because yeah the paypal address are verified addresses and yeah. I, I i believe that is correct yeah. No, it is yeah. because I researched right. it when I sold those shoes on Instagram for $260. Uh -oh. I had an unconfirmed address and I was freaking out, but I still did it because once you see those dollar signs, <laughs> are you going to back down from that? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's, you know, that's the thing though, is that yeah. when you see the dollar signs, that's when you probably should back down the most. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and right. I did it and I never filed a claim. He's happy with awesome. it. Awesome. So, well, Steph is here. The, the the important half is here anyway. Hey, Steph. <laughs> Hi, guys. So sorry. We never saw your message. We were logged in on our seller Facebook app. Oh, usually where we had a lot of activity today. So we never saw it. That's why we didn't didn't show. We were in bed in our pajamas, 
watching the show. Well, yeah. There's no way y'all wear pajamas to bed. Y'all are y'all are way too weird not to sleep nude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or do you guys need to know? Did you do you have some twain? Do I have some twain? <laughs> Tony says twain. Oh. twain. I think it's I time for a beer chug. That lemon and then the lime one, that's really good with Corona. So, uh, uh, you, you know what? You guys need to introduce yourselves. Who are you? Oh. Exactly. We don't even know My who name you are. is Indigo Montoya. <laughs> 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 you can't hey, this is Steve. Spot and I'm Stephanie. We're from Resale Killers. Steven said Resale Killers. Hi. This is our six pack. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, y'all have one beer to share between the two of you? <laughs> oh, I'm having a girly drink. What is that, a Zima or something? Uh, I can't see it. My a Zima. <laughs> Showing your age, Lonnie. Pretty close. Is oh, Mike. Okay. Pink grapefruit. Yeah, pink lemonade. Pretty good. Okay, I'm going to try the twang. Okay, so twang. Don't pour it in the beer or it's going to foam. You, you, you put it on your hand or what do you do? Yeah. You know what I did? I put it on my palm. I just shook it on my I palm. I did too. I put it right and here. Then, and then I would lick my hand like a cow, licking a salt blo salt block. And then I'd get a swig. That's exactly what I do. Let's be honest. Right, That's make, what I do. Hang on. I got to go get mine. I want to try the hot one today. <laughs> I got to go grab mine too. I got the hot one, of course. I want hot. I still get... haven't tried the hot one yet. It's good. I'm trying that one right now. I don't like beer. That's my problem. So that'll be... That's an issue. Hi, Andy. Hi, Steve. Like I don't see. I don't like wine either. <laughs> oh, it's a little salt and shaker, uh, salt and pepper shaker. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Can't <you> say ew. <laughs> I don't know. It makes beer taste better, but that is salty just on its own. I'm gonna try the lemon. What am I? I'm trying to lemon lime. Mm, that one's good. Lemon lime with. Ooh, mm. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried my yeah. are trying the same one. That's because uh, you said you didn't want any, Andy, or did you got since you? Yeah, said I did. Too? Yeah, 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 yeah. You threw them in my, with my Legos. I got. Okay. Did you try it? I haven't tried it? Yeah, I haven't tried it yet, and I don't know how it look good with you know with with my porters. <laughs> uh, probably not so good. Hey, put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm going to lick my palm. Uh, we don't know where that's been. <laughs> that's right. I like it. Do you? Wow, that is really good, actually. Isn't it good? Yeah, really good Let me try yours. I, love I think it. it's, the, it's the Corona, and they're really good with the lime, right? Right. Mm hmm. Mm. I'm sending my blood pressure med mm. pills to you, Tanya. <laughs> Dwayne, Dwayne, blood pressure is the least of your problems, right? What are you trying to say? Nothing, mm, nothing, nothing at all. The hot lime is really good. If I told that. you it was good, yeah. Man, that one is I good. like that. I avoid hot food. No, it's not hot. You can handle this. It's not so, that hot. <laughs> yeah. I avoid spicy. Armando came to town because of spicy, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's how it all oh man, that's how it started, and I've avoided it like hot food since then. Spicy food. He does. Okay, so let's try the hot. <laughs> let's invite Armando back to town. No, they're gonna lose viewers talking like this. Yeah, come on, go for it. Sorry, guys, this is the spicy that's, one. That's okay. People that watch my sh channel are freaks anyway. <laughs> mm. You are freaks anyway. That's actually really good too. But I like the 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 lemon lime the best. Thanks, Tanya. Thank it's you, actually Tanya. very good. Yeah, it's good. So what were you guys talking about? Yeah, we missed. Sorry we're so late. Uh, actually, all we're talking about is people are asking us questions in the chat. So you didn't really miss out on anything. The last one was, uh, will you change your address if somebody requests it after the sale in, on eBay? So We've oh, done that, man. Right? When the buyer requests an address change? Yeah, yeah, let's like, say they bought something and they're like, oh, can you send it to my mom's house instead? Sure, why not? Definitely. If it's, we've done that and we had people where it actually, if it changed the cost. Actually, we had one recently. A guy bought some, some lights 
he changed it from San Diego to Arizona. Shipping was it didn't make a difference in the shipping. It was sure insignificant. Sure. But we have had people where it made a huge difference. Yeah, and then they're upset that the address, the amount changed or whatever, and it's like, well, you switched your address. Yeah. Of course, it changed. Right. But you know, we just redo it or avoid the transaction if that's what they want after the price changes. Sure. So, all right. Yeah, pretty yeah, we'll much do it. answered basically what everybody else has said. So, <laughs> well, so let's, I'm trying the lime one. Ooh, I like the lime okay. one. Let's. We've had let's people see. try to change the pickup location for local stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's address Barb's question. She's asked it twice now. What what was your weirdest item to sell? Like who would buy this S H I T and sold and it sold? <laughs> I know. That's a that's a tough question. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Lonnie, you go shit. first. <laughs> you, you go ahead, Lonnie. You go first. We'll each answer this one in a row. Okay, here. when I first started, I had like really it took me a while to refine my picker's eye and I would buy some just straight shit. Like I would come home <laughs> with this stuff and Candace would be like, What the hell are you doing? You know? Like I would come back with some really crazy stuff. So this one time I bought <laughs> this picture. It was a bullfighter, it was a matador on velvet. Oh, I had one of those when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, it was like this big or something like that. And Candace is like, that, you might as well just take that garbage. It ain't selling. And this is right around my first fourth quarter. I threw that sucker up, I think, for about 20 bucks. It was before I really knew Tanya. So she would have made me charge more. But uh, <laughs> right. I threw that thing up for about 20 bucks. And cha-ching, it, it did take about a month to sell but it sold so wow, that was nice. one of my weird wow. things it sounds right, awesome about you, Andy? that's what i thought steve but, you know i i don't have any like weird things that i've ever <laughs> sold i mean i picked up some garbage but i mean i just i really haven't i mean and that was like you know kind of like what lonnie said early on when you just you're so uneducated on stuff you know but i i, I mean really for me i mean just one of the the weirdest things that I can't believe people spend money on and, and will spend good is freaking coffee cups. It, you know, I mean, it's just one of them dumb things, but I mean, you know, they would spend some good money on those and, and I could never believe that they would take and buy that. But I mean, it's not a weird item. It's just, you know, yeah, uh, yeah I, I really don't have any weird, weird or real oddball items. I don't think that I've ever really picked up. I, you know I mean? I am kind of pretty picky. I think on, you know, what I do grab. All right, Shane, you're up. Well, so I would have to, I would have to say, <clears throat> so what I used to do is I kind of sold off and on, um, on eBay since 2005. And in the last two years, I've been really hardcore on eBay. And when I first started out, I used to buy a lot of storage bins and probably I would say the weirdest thing I ever sold. And I felt dirty selling it, but it was really <laughs> oh weird was, wow, this is good like 30 VHS sets of Girls Gone Wild. And they sold them <laughs> instantly, like quick, like 30 of them. And I'm, t I'm talking like they sold for good money, but that was back in 2005. And and honestly, like they sold really fast. There's nothing wrong with that, know. dude. It's cool. I don't know why you'd feel dirty unless well, you, I mean, you know, watched them all first it's and like, then sold them. Well, I'm, I mean, think, I'm thinking I personal left collection. I could have left that out. <laughs> <laughs> Storage bin. Storage bin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. What about you, Stephen Steph? I could think of a couple of them. Uh, uh, one immediately came to mind. Is it an early one? Yeah. Is it when you were still working? Yes. It's probably the same one. Let me tell you. Yeah, it was gross. I'm sure some of, I think some people have heard it before, but when we first started reselling, um, Steve was at home already. I was still stuck at, you know, our old job. Um, and Steve started selling everything in the house. Like just, he just started getting obsessed with selling stuff on eBay. And that's how all this started. And so I would come home and I'd see the stuff that he had listed. And I was like, what are you doing selling some of the stuff? The grossest one was he sold an old heating pad, like the kind, you know, when you're <laughs> sick of the liquid 
piece, put that on there. I'm like, no one is going to buy a used heating pad. That is disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> and somebody <laughs> bought it, of course. Well, there was, <laughs> here's the thing. So gross. The heating pad. So I was listing anything. Even if it was nailed down, I would take the nails out and I would list it. And I don't even know where the heating pad came from, but it had stains on it. And it was really <laughs> oh, oh, well worn. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> here's what's funny. Yeah. When she went to work, she told everybody, and I know these people too. You know, I used to work with them. Yeah. And she's telling them, you won't believe what he's selling. It's disgusting. <laughs> they all look at it on the listing and they're like, they're That thinking, is gross, Steve. That yeah, is gross. Yeah, they're thinking I'm crazy. It sold like quickly. Mm -hmm. And it went to Minnesota. And in my listing, I remember I put. I, I said this long spill about relief from pain and arthritis and I just like I sold the heck out of that thing and, <laughs> and I got positive feedback and a nice comment and everything on that yeah and no, the positive feedback was ah yeah. that's what it was <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> it was it's, ridiculous can I so. tell you can I tell you one more thing yeah okay because uh V8 speaking of VHS tapes I was in a thrift store, and this is a long time ago also, and there was all these VHS with coaches teaching, you know, certain positions. Like, uh, remember Chuck Knox, Steelers, legendary coach? Yeah. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? No. The Steelers, <laughs> the Steelers yeah. legendary coach, won all those Super Bowls. Okay, he, there was one, it was like a, like a, a camp, and it was, the, they had VHS tapes, of them teaching like different positions uh tony dungy was on there and all these different coaches and and one of them was the guy that was at uh pit who was molesting the kids oh god sandusky. that guy sandusky yeah yeah he was oh. like really well respected as a coach before they found out he was you know a freaking pervert but i had like i had all those vhs tapes and i was selling them and it happened right after i got these like within days all the news came out and they were sell they sold so fast those tapes for I was selling the VHS tapes for like eighty dollars for one. And it was VHS. So they're buying these things. And then that last one, I was just like, man, I know I feel like somebody's gonna buy it, but I didn't list it. I ended up like donating that thing back. But would you guys have sold that? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> he was raping. Boys. <laughs> yeah, but what's that got to do with yeah. this video cassette and you're selling? How, like, how is that? Like, it just made me. It made me feel dirtier than that freaking heating pad with poop stains on it. You, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you still sold it, right? I mean, money makes uh, makes it a little better. I didn't sell. Oh, I sold the heating pad. I didn't sell the Sandusky. Yeah. What just, did you do with it? I donated it back to the thrift store. So somebody oh, else yeah. could buy it instead <laughs> of destroying it like you should have. Yeah. You weren't I gonna sell it. Trash it, but I was just—it just felt dirty. It really did. Yeah. Hey, and you got to go with your gut sometimes. I mean, if it, if it bothers you, it may bother somebody else. So, <laughs> um, let's see. All right, Tanya, you're up. Okay, so it has to be the flip flops that I bought for one dollar. <laughs> it sold for—I think they sold for a hundred and ten, if I'm not mistaken. But they were uh -huh. old flip flops. The size was worn off. The brand was worn off. So I guess in a way you could say it was a well worn item. But I didn't advertise it that way, but it's still sold, and it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, what did you – you had another one, Lonnie, you said? Yeah, um, I was at an auction, like a local little country auction, and they put up for bid this a sign from a Pizza Hut delivery drivers. Or Pizza – I think, yeah, it's Pizza Hut. You know, those little lighted signs they put on top of their car, they plug in their cigarette lighter. Well, I bought it for five bucks. I sold it for a hundred. I thought that was pretty weird. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah, that is. So weird. if you ever if you ever see those pizza signs, I used to them. steal Domino's ones all the time. Well, I mean, don't steal them. Don't steal them. I'll be back. I'm gonna run to Godfather's real quick down the street. <laughs> 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 I'm more curious about Dwayne's life of crime. <laughs> I was looking at that. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, you know, hey. We're not talking about that. Hey, Jory, how are you, buddy? Good. How are you guys? Good. Good. Glad to hear it. 
My wife Drink let it. me on the show tonight. Oh, how nice of her. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Yeah. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, still working at that Japanese whiskey. Man, nice. are you going to milk that for like six months or what? Yeah. Must be oh, okay. some good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, probably is. Wrong. All right, so we're we're gonna hit you real quick since uh, you just came on. What's the weirdest thing that you, uh, or the you know grossest weirdest thing that you got that actually mm. sold? Wow. The the grossest weirdest thing I got that I actually sold. Mm. I sold a van that belonged to a hooker. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> And we we fig we figured out after the fact that it was that it was yeah. hooker. Um, it was uh it was a two thousand and I don't know maybe one two thousand Dodge Caravan. It was a blue one. We got it in and um. It was a work vehicle. Put, it, it, I guess I guess so. I wonder if she wrote it off for her taxes. Uh, so I got it. I got in this this van that I bought for I think like four hundred dollars because it was uh it was just a trade in that came into the dealership. When I got to cleaning it, I realized the back had no seats and it only had a blanket in the back and a pillow. But we got some pretty low-end customers, so I'm like, okay, they probably just slept in the van. <laughs> so I got cleaning the van up. I'm gonna sell it. I open up the little drawer that's underneath the passenger seat in those Dodge Caravans, and there's a book in there. And then the book has all these names and phone numbers, and it has dollar amounts beside it. And oh. then there's a whole bunch of condoms in there. And then there was also oh. some panties in there. And then I started putting two to two together. I'm like, wait. Like a 38-year-old woman traded this in. She kind of looked like a used-up stripper, and then we kind of put it together. And she always paid cash when she paid for her vehicle. So I, I ended up From sending the it to the records. I, I stopped cleaning it. I didn't want to clean it anymore, and we just cleared it out. Uh, it's probably the grossest thing I've ever sold, I think. You got a to black with something like that, right? <laughs> I know. You can always count on the debris that you eat. That's a <laughs> I know. I always got the crazy stories, damn Canadians anyway. Jory, you didn't buy that van from the parking lot of the TV bar, did you? No, no, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we asked for her job info, though, that was it. <laughs> All right, let's see what do we got here. Um, it says I only use, I only sell used items. Any specific used items I should focus on for Q4? I'm ten months into my reselling. This is my first Q4. Who? Is that? Who? Yeah. Sam Dallas. Hey, Sam. Oh, Sam Dallas. Yeah. Oh boy, that's a tough one. Well, the problem with that, Sam, is every one of us has a different niche. I mean, each one of us is going to have a different used yeah. item that we would do. I mean, I, I do clothing, you know, goods. Steve and Steph do returns. So it really, um, it's going to really depend on what you want to sell. Yeah, but he's asking specifically what sells good in Q4. So, if you have, okay. Let, Toys and games. Toys and games are, are, you know what I mean? That's that's video, your best. Yep. Video, games, video well. games will straight up just fly. Yeah, off. yeah video games. Mm -hmm. Video games will fly away right now. You can always get more money during Q4 for video games. Yeah, they definitely go quick. I would yeah. say anything that's like really unique too, like anything that is like would make a really unique gift. Like I've sold a lot of tramp art type pieces. Uh, one time I bought like this thing that had like a bunch of butterflies matted on it, you know, underneath glass and that sold really fast in Q4. So I mean anything that would make like a really unique, cool gift for somebody, I would recommend that. <laughs> cool. Amazon yeah, so Amazon seller was saying baking products like cookware and that sort of stuff sells well. Yeah, that would I could see that would yeah. go real well. But like small appliances, yeah, for sure. When we were doing eBay, like that was our full time. Honestly, we never we never considered Q four. We didn't consider any Qs. We just we were always. <laughs> We were always, if we were at thrift stores, we were just picking up anything we could make a buck on. Garage sales, anything we could make a buck on. Before we started getting pallets, we still went to like the Disneyland auction that we do. And we never, I think we just, we were not educated in, in gearing up for that or maybe we would have, but we just never, 
it was like when we go out, we're looking for something that we're going to make a buck on. Whether it's a stained heating pad or a hooker van, we're going to buy it. <laughs> It'll sell. Just and we would sell a lot. No, we would sell a lot in Q4 also, but we didn't know it was Q4. July and August were our biggest months historically. Yeah. Always. I don't know reason. why. On eBay. July and August. Wow. Oh. I always sell the most in January. Huh. Interesting. Okay, let's see. I got told that there's more questions up top. Oh, well, this is the same question um, that I just copied over there. So, uh, Tina Scott wants to know, how long do you all keep your items in inventory or your store before donating or trashing them? Oof. For me, um, I'll go through and re, uh, re research it um, and verify that it's still worth being in there. But anything over about a year, it, it, if it hasn't sold in a year for me, typically it's not going to sell. So for me, it's yeah. about a year. Yeah. That's, it depends. That's, that's about what I do. Yeah, that's about what I do as well. And I've actually started putting in the uh, custom label line now on your listings. I've actually put the original date that I list the item in that line. So I know when I go hit myself similar, when it's, you know, three, four, five, or wait a minute, okay, I've had this thing for a year now. You know what? Either, yeah, it's time to, it's time either to put it 50% off or just get rid of it. So it's, it's just a, a quick little reference for me now to, for where all my inventory is at instead of having to go back to my spreadsheets and everything else and try to find the specific shirt. It's just right there. That custom label my, is so amazing. We put our cost yeah. in it. I do too. And I'm our, doing, where we yep. from. Yep, I, I'm doing the exact right. same thing. I put, I put the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, lo I put my bin, lo I put a bin location in there. Um, I, I put where I purchased it from, how much I purchased it, and the original listing date all in that custom label line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just put my inventory number so that, and then that goes back to my spreadsheet, which has all that. Um, so for me, it's easy because my inventory numbers just start at one and kept, you know, go down. So the smaller the number, the longer it's been in my store. So we typically do our best offer on everything. So um, if Steve looks at the, you know, somebody's offer or I look and I didn't list it and I don't remember what it is, we at least can look at that little custom label and know our cost. So that's helpful for having two people looking yeah. at the same thing. Yeah, that's yeah, a great absolutely. idea. Yeah, that would yeah. Definitely, definitely work yeah. well. What about you, Tanya? What was the question? <laughs> uh, how long you hold on to stuff before you Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I agree with you guys probably about a year I was just thinking that um, the other day I need to go ahead and go through my inventory and uh, get rid of a lot of things that haven't sold if it's been over a year and with my antique booth uh, as well I was out there today and I was thinking you know we're about to have a really big sale uh, uh, starting on Black Friday and whatever doesn't sell after December is over with I'm thinking about just clearing the whole thing out and just starting completely over Wow. It is a lot of work, but it needs to be done. Yeah, I, I uh, when we moved, I, I discontinued my whole eBay store and started over and did read, because I, I had old things on there that had crummy pictures. Not that my pictures are great now, but they're better than they were. Um, and just a different listing style that I was doing. So when we moved in February, um, I did that, and that was, oh, man, that seemed to take forever. Even though I had all the information already, it, it seemed to take like four or five months just to load the 300 that I already had just because I had to find them and take them out and repicture them and then redo all, you know, anything that I was going to do. So pretty crazy. Okay, what so Peanut is, Peanut's playing with the water bottle. You see Jory take it away from him. <laughs> 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 He's so cute. Is he a is he a Boston Terrier? Is that what he was? I can't remember. Is it a, I think he said he's a mutt, but I can't remember now either. Yeah, he probably is a mutt. But okay, let's see what else we got. Um, now, do you guys all throw everything to auction at least one last hail mary before? Well, that's a good question. Get rid of it? Yeah, it is a good question. That's a good one. Yeah. I have in the past for sure. Like I'll just start the auction at like nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. um, because yeah, that would be a pain in the booty to go back and list all those items that they didn't sell. Because when I first started doing eBay, that's what I did. And um, yeah. I mean, I would make a lot of money doing it, but the items that didn't sell would take a while to relist. And then you had to remember your original price you had it at. And 
But yeah, mm -hmm. I would definitely give it one last chance and try it at auction or something. Well, we yeah. honestly, for me, like, I kind of have mixed feelings on this because a lot of things take the right buyer. Mm -hmm. And so true. for me, I've had stuff for a year and a half on eBay and I've raised the price, I've lowered it, I have 50% off and literally it ends at 50% off and it gets relisted and sells at full price. It's the weirdest thing ever. And that's kind of like what you got to look at is, you know, I, go ahead, Bonnie. No, no, no. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, man. And like, I, I agree because I am not one of these guys. Scavenger life talks about this a lot. Like they list stuff and then they, f they forget about it. Right. They yeah. don't, they don't like, I wouldn't even know if I had something up longer than a year. I wouldn't even know. And honestly, the small amount of stuff that I have that makes it that long, which is really tiny, I wouldn't care. You know, I don't go in and fiddle with prices and all that stuff. I don't even look. I got too much stuff I haven't listed yet. Like the mm -hmm. time that I spend fiddle, fiddle farting with, oh, I'm going to tweak this and tweak that, I could have listed some more stuff and made more money. And the other stuff usually sells anyway. Yep. So, And that's kind of like – Feeding off that is kind of like what I learned is eventually, like I feel like if you have good pictures and good keywords, it's going to sell. You just got to let it sell. For me, it yeah, depends how much it's worth and how much real estate it takes up in yeah. my storage. True, True that. Because good like yeah, I, I bought like 150, 200 HPI and Team Losi parts. They're just little RC parts for gas powered RC cars. It's oh, been wow. two and a half years with those things. And I still get, at first I got a lot of sales because all the popular rare things sold quick. But now it's still every week or two, I get a $15 sale, $25 sale, $12 sale. And they all fit in a box this big and they're all stacked away. They go in an envelope to ship. So I don't care that they sit for two years. If I got five board games and they haven't sold in eight months to a year, they're, they're out. So that I can put some record players on the shelf or a DVD VHS player or something that's going to bring more money. That's true. Dude, that is yeah. so true. I didn't even, that, that's a great point. Cause like, yeah, because yeah, I had like that horse that I bought a while back. And yeah. once I figured out it wasn't like super valuable, somebody, I got an offer for $20 less than I paid for it. And I was sick of looking at the thing and it was big and bulky. And I was like, okay, get the hell out, you know, giddy up, get the hell out of here. And um, yeah, I sold it for yeah. a $20 loss and I felt great about it, you know? <laughs> I think when, when we were doing eBay, it's interesting. Like we had, we had the things where we would be like, okay, this hasn't sold in. If I just looked at it and it had been a couple weeks, there's things we just say, forget this. If it was just a cheap item, but there's expensive items named like usually like a collectible or just something that would require a specific buyer. And we would do like you were saying, Lonnie, it's like list it and forget it. And truly we always looked at it as if this takes a year or two years or whatever, we'll still make more money off of it than our money would be making in a bank account or whatever, mm -hmm. unless you need the money to keep, you know, like it depends on how much you bought it for. Like if we went out and spent $10,000 on something, we want our money back. You know, but <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. But if it's a collectible that we got paid $25 and, and it's just a rare find and we're going to get 500, a thousand dollars on it, that thing's going to sit there until Mr. Wright comes along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a great point in the real estate. So, um, I have a question. Oh, okay. What's up, Tanya? Okay, so what do you guys do with your items if you do decide to take them out of your store? So you don't you don't want to redonate or donate back to the place where you shop at, do you? So what do you do with your items? I have a good trick to do with them. You lot them up into light categories. You put them in fancy boxes and you send them away to local auctions as job lots and you let the next reseller think he can make a buck or two off your board games or oh. toys or whatever it is. Or, or you schedule a show with uh, Dwayne. Schedule oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> Dwayne, can you pencil me in for some time in March? You're going to have a whole bunch of stuff that you need to sell off, huh? Uh. <laughs> craziness let's see so yeah what did you what was your question tanya do we donate to the same place oh where you yeah okay I remember right. now. So. um actually since i do clothing um i usually have an outlet for most of my clothes you know by size 
um, you know, like my son, he's a extra large. So anything that's halfway decent extra large, he can have if I don't sell it off. Um, but then, yeah, I do. I do normally take it to the thick um, store that I don't. Then I don't shop at very much. So yeah, or a lot of people say they might have garage sales, but to me, that's a whole lot of work. My husband keeps pushing me to have one, and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do it. <laughs> they are a lot of work. It's just like if you had a bunch, like a litter of kittens that you didn't want, you know? Like <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh no! If, Not the kitten thing again. Like if you Not bring there. them, if you bring them to like a, a stream that's too close to your house, <laughs> <laughs> they could end up coming back. You want to travel far away? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Beer refill. Good analogy. I'm gonna get a Good refill. One. Yeah, you guys, if they heard me laughing that loud, that's because this is gone. So <laughs> one down, and you've been warned. Oh, great. Steve, it's okay. I'm a lightweight too. So. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Okay, so funny. has there been days where you haven't had any sales? Yeah, I've had like four this week. Yep, same here. Oh, it's been, um, I, 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 I think we had about one a day. They usually get like one a month. One a month. Regarding the last yeah. question, this is what we do. Okay. If you Can guys have out? a saver. No, if you have a Savers, they we donate our stuff back to Savers and get that thirty percent off a coupon. So our stuff all goes back to Savers. Nice, cool. Oh boy, we're all watching Steve. <laughs> Not me. I'm watching the baby, Evan. Little baby man. Oh, where is he? <laughs> so far, oh. he's being good. Keeps pulling my headphones out of my ears. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Oh, it's fussy because he wants the bottle. Oh, he's hungry. Mm -hmm. Like, who all are you people? <laughs> he's watching he a YouTube like... video. Looking over at the actual <laughs> six-pack show. Oh. Yeah, I, hey, we got to read this. Uh, Brian the Oakbrook Picker said, Ronnie, you better come on or Andy will be your doppelganger. <laughs> 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 okay, we got to hear it, Andy. Come on. Right. Oh, man, come on, man. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Nah. I, I'll, another, another time. Another time. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> no. <laughs> I wanna 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 hear it. No. That was... hey, Ronnie, I told you, man, they're all bad influences. Man. <laughs> we'll take thirty uh, or twenty. All right, so there's a couple of questions. Let's see. Further up, we've got um, how much of your house do you put up for your inventory? Do you keep it in one room or do you have a storage unit? We know, Lonnie, you have a storage unit, but what about in your house? Do you have like a designated uh, room for your business? Uh, no, I don't. Not right now. Um, we had, I had an office prior to our house flooding. And then after we rebuilt the, the rooms, uh, my daughters were sharing a bedroom. Oh, I gave up my office, let her have a room, bedroom. So my older daughter. Aww. So uh, I don't have like an office right now. I do have a nook that I need to build like do it like a built-in desk into it's probably it's pretty mm -hmm. small but it, it'll make a nice little desk area um and i work out of storage unit back and forth every day you know every nice day, so right what about you andy don't you have like the entire basement andy what's that i'm sorry oh i'm spacing <laughs> out <laughs> i said don't you Not have that. like your entire basement Half, I, half of my half of my basement is actually dedicated to uh, yeah to my business. A quarter of it, um, I have kind of set where it's all my my listing prep area, and then the other and the other quarter of it is all storage, it's all inventory. B besides the uh, inventory behind me here, but yeah, uh, yeah, but the it's little, all it's the a lot, yeah, yeah. But the, the ninety percent of my inventory is all in bins and racks, all on the other side of the basement across from me. Gotcha. Jim. All right, what about you? I missed who he said. You have, you have a, I mean, you work at a storage unit facility. I'm not a storage, yeah, yeah. The only things I keep here that I sell online would be like 
if I sell an odd rare video game or something like that, that's already in my collection. I got a little table I can take a picture on, but other than that, everything's just at the storage. It used sense. to be a spare bedroom. It's been great having a storage. What about you, Shane? Uh, well, for me, everything's kept in my house. And so the thing is, is this is where eBay, eBay has been, has gave me a lot. And I'm trying to say this as humble as possible. Um, eBay has given me a point where like I made the money I made last year went for a down payment on a house mm. and we bought a house that's like 2,600 square feet. So, nice. you know, I have the whole basement. I have a huge room downstairs and we have another room that's even bigger that we are going to use as a family room and have it in it. So I'm probably going to be spilling over into that pretty soon. And Steve and Steph, I, I think we've seen yours. Yours is kind of scattered about your house, right? Oh my god! Then a Prius. I mean, it's like every time you turn, every time you turn the camera, there's a there's a wall of stuff. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Our entire guest room is. We've got rolling metro racks, so at least we can roll them out of there if we have a guest. But that is where everything goes. That's listed and the garage. It's in our bedroom. It's in the kitchen. It's in our living room. It is everywhere in the house. Everywhere. It's unbelievable. It's everywhere. So we live in it. And we have a storage unit, but nothing. And you have a storage unit, yeah. <laughs> wow. And a Prius. Yes, and the van. The van's filled all the time with stuff to go to the swap meet. Whenever it's ready to go, it goes out in the van. So, wow. yeah. Everywhere. Hey, Jory, is Evan old enough to hit the subscribe button yet? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, probably has, he probably has more subscribers than me. <laughs> Dude, he is interested in our show, isn't he? He yeah, is a six pack fan, I think. Just looking at it. Which is amazing. Yeah. So far, his favorite thing to watch is cars racing. Love watching like the Le Mans race, NASCAR. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're gonna be like daddy doing donuts in parking lots. <laughs> he just wants to see. The, he just wants the six pack show. He keeps looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Go what about you, Tom? On you. Um, just, uh, or. Our house is pretty small. It's only about 1,900 square feet. So I do have a storage unit. Um, I have what should be our dining room. It's called my eBay room. And then um, <laughs> I have recently started storing some stuff in my closet as well. So a lot of the clothes and stuff I just have um, in a box in there, like in a bin. So um, And they're already all poly bagged up. So when they sell, I can just go grab them. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And I guess this kind of leads right into the last question is, how big is everybody's death piles? <laughs> how many items do you have to list, Lonnie? Oh, I don't know. I probably have about, a, I don't know, a lot. Like, I have some that I would say is are death piles where they're not worth much, but I have a, I have a ton of stuff that is actually good inventory that I just haven't listed yet. Mm -hmm. So, um I, I, I probably have about a thousand items I could list though. Okay. What about and Jory? Uh I have two rubber made totes right now that are about two foot wide, three and a half foot tall, and they're full. So forty to a hundred things. But you get me on a day that I buy out an estate or a unit, then I'll be telling you a few thousand. So not a lot right now. Right, sure. Andy? Uh, I, I stay up on it pretty pretty good. I think I've only got like two clear like totes, you know, just kind of normal size totes that uh, have clothes in it. I think one's got jeans and one's got uh, some button-up shirts. That's about it. Uh, pretty much I list everything as it comes in. I, you know, I, I, it, it really keeps that death file, man, from, from catching up on you. For sure. Shane? So for me, um, my death pile is pretty large. Um, and, you know, a lot of that reason is because I have, was going through school and I was going through – I've had a lot on my plate since I'm mm -hmm. out of school now. And all that stuff, I've been listing pretty efficiently. I think I went up from, like, I guess in the last couple of weeks, like 140 to, like, I'm over 180 items. I'm going to be near over 200 by probably the end of next week. But I probably have about 150 pieces of clothing and just clothing to list. And then four totes full of stuff. Yeah from two years ago, that was really bad buys that I'm gonna actually take to a consignment auction house and get rid of it. No. Cool. Well, All right, Johnny, I know you're... 
you're always talking about your death pile. How many do you have? Um, well, I would definitely say for the jewelry, that's like where a lot of a lot of my death pile is at for sure. But I do have, you know, like a ton of other stuff as well. I really do. You know, I what, my, very you, know my, <laughs> you know what my thought is on this is that, okay, so I've got about two more weeks of good garage sale in here. And garage sales are going to shut down. And I hate thrift stores. I basically don't want to go to them. So from, I'd say, December, January, February, I am not going to source. So whenever whenever garage sales are hot and heavy here, I buy, 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 buy. And I, don't, I won't stop buying. And then for three months or so, I'm just going to list out of my storage unit. So... We all have different ways we want to do things and we all have different goals we want to accomplish. You know, like, um, like, let's see, Jory, you said you had two tubs. Andy, you said you had a couple of bins. Andy has a full-time job. Andy mm -hmm. can't have a bunch of shit everywhere. <laughs> you know, and honestly, it, it keeps me you know? for, for picking better items. You know, I could be more selective. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I know that you have to, yeah, I mean, I don't want to go out and go buy 50 items and then, throw them all in a pile and list two or three i go out and i might buy 10 items but i know i can get those 10 listed and i and i want those to be quality items well you have to you you have your time that you spend on reselling is more valuable than my time because you have less of it yeah i mean i, I don't think it's more valuable but i mean but no no that's not but I mean, you have a, okay. You have a, a lower quantity, so you have I to make, have to make the most of my time. Yeah, you have to make it count yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I'm actually doing wanna... really well. I have 26 items that I haven't listed. Wow! That I just That's looked at them and counted them. Wow! Because uh, it That's it was it. so long that I, I I went so long without sourcing. Uh, like I said, when we moved and stuff. So all I've been doing is, is uh, you know, listing. And then when I do go sourcing now, and usually that week. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's oh, see. Killers. No, no, the killers didn't talk about their death piles. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. We skipped right over you. <laughs> by, by death piles, I want to get clear what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> right. no, this is not good. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you guys are talking in code. <laughs> I just want to get clear. I don't want to give any secrets. Now, our, you know what? For us, we have, it's, I guess you would call it a death pile, but what we do when we're talking about customer returns is our death pile eventually becomes parts. Last scenario would be... Uh, donation you know or whatever if it's something that is worth donating but now we're going to start taking it to a scrap yard that we found in our area i think they are there. talking about all the stuff we have not listed on ebay oh, that like pile. 120 pounds of clothes that we got for free it's all the That's jewelry we've got a billion a billion not a billion we've got hundreds and hundreds of items that we could sell that we could list on ebay that we just That's we're true. selling so much locally we don't even bother with the ebay right now because we've just discovered this local thing last Six months or whatever and it's just booming for us so we're selling faster and it takes less time to sell locally so we've totally neglected any of the stuff that we've gone out and dumpster dove or um, thrift store purchased or yard sale we haven't listed anything hardly at all on eBay at all so the, the free clothes that we got as soon as we like Steph listed the Uggs sold immediately listed a jacket sold immediately locally and we just have so much trouble getting motivated to list those freaking free clothes. And there's there's probably a few hundred pieces. And there's so much more stuff. Look at those records. Oh, no. oh yeah. You, you so get you a little uh, a nice. teenager. You know, a, oh, wow. a five or ten dollar an hour teenager to do all that stuff for you. Seems like an employee, man. <laughs> it doesn't work into our business plan. If we knew one, we'd think about it. <laughs> <laughs> People don't let their kids around, killers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, huh? So look yeah. like Steve and drive a van. Ooh, you know. Here, so yeah. Not recommended. Go pick up a kid in their van. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, no windows. Yeah, can your kid work for us? We'll come pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't hand out Benadryl popsicles. <laughs> yeah. But I like I like what Lonnie's saying. Like, like honestly, we could get through the the way we get through these pallets right now. And during this time of the year, we take a lot of time off because we're going to go visit family and people are going to visit us. But say we get through with this, and we will not have a dry spell. Like if we just say, let's not buy any pallets for a month or two. We've got stuff that we can list. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and we're choosing not to right now just because we are busy. And you we know, really, really, really want to save our space in our storage unit um, for Christmas returns. So we want to buy end of January, mid January. We'll see. I don't know how far it'll be. So we're trying, we're going to get down to the bare bones for a while. So we might have to, going toward some of this death pile stuff. So we'll see. Because we want to get pallets. Hey, before, before the show started tonight, so we went on to chat, and um, I had actually, Lonnie, I get your questions ready. And this can tie into how I feel about this right now. Is One of the questions was that I wanted to ask was, how do you guys stay motivated or motivate yourself? Because that's honestly what ours is coming down to is we are choosing not to do that stuff, to not just go, the two of us can knock out a lot of stuff if we say, hey, this whole week, we're gonna grind it out. But we don't wanna grind. You know, that's just not, we don't wanna do that. We wanna right do now. other things. But how do you, what do you guys do to motivate yourself in your reselling world? I'll tell you, can, can I go first? for it man so so sourcing wise i don't have to motivate myself because it's so much fun it's my favorite thing in the world to do <laughs> so there, it takes no motivation i will tell you that okay so obviously i need to make money right so money is a motivation but you you probably want a better answer than that i'll tell you one motivation to have is shooting youtube videos kind of motiv helps to motivate me to want to do better you know, say, hey, look at this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, not like I, I think YouTube kind of helps hold me accountable to a certain extent. You know, I mean, we can all paint whatever picture we want on, on YouTube, of course, but a lot of that stuff can be checked. People go look at your eBay accounts or, you know, all that stuff. So um, I think putting out there what I'm doing does kind of motivate me to want to do better. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because it is a bit of, of accountability, like you were saying. You know, you when you when you come on YouTube and do it. So or, I don't, you know. Yeah, or or talking to other people like that are in the six pack here. Right. You know, mm -hmm. talking to you guys and seeing you guys do great. I'm like, well, hell, I want to do like that. You know, <laughs> and you know, I'll see y'all share stuff sometimes, and I'll be like, oh, I want to share stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's just like there's some yeah. peer stuff going on and some public stuff going on and I need some money stuff going on so well and that's that's like feeding off what Lonnie said that's exactly what it is for me like I can do a YouTube video and then right after that I get into a like a listing frenzy like I'm trying to list as much as possible and then I'll get kind of burnt out in a couple days and then I'll just restart the cycle there you go my motivation used to be my video game collection because originally my main source of getting to video games, I'd sell crap on eBay for a little bit of extra money, go grab some things I wanted, and and that was it. That was before I realized how much money I could make with it. Now it's it's a half renovated house. I just walk through it, and that's more than enough motivation to start more ma making more money to get it done. Yeah. yeah. Hey Ronnie. Yeah. Hey Ronnie. Ronnie. Hey, boys. I got my computer to work on that laptop. So and it's like, hey. say hi to Ronnie. <laughs> you, guys for one thing, you guys are only asking the poor guy for one thing. I know, man. <laughs> it's like a one trick pony. Let's start a GoFundMe for Ronnie to buy a new microphone, huh? Golly. Here you go. Sounds Why is this microphone stuck? Oh, it's horrible. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> What's with the laptop? I never used the laptop, so I dug it out because the iMac hard drive. Shit the bed, I think. If you turn your volume down, does that help at all? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Is that working together? It's horrible. Mm. 
Yeah, it, it's really it's it's really got a lot of feedback in it. I mean, a lot of uh, noise in it. It sounds like right. static. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it. See you guys later. You almost sound like Darth Aww. Vader or something. Oh, oh, man. Shit, Ronnie. <laughs> Why were you guys so mean to him? Right? Poor Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, they kicked him off. No, we didn't. We didn't kick him off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I guess Andy's going to have to do an impression. <laughs> 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 oh, can you do Ronnie yeah. talking in a bad mic impression? <laughs> <laughs> Put a couple oh, marbles in your mouth when you talk. You could probably get that same static. Oh, y'all brutal, man. <laughs> Why aren't you doing it? Uh, maybe later. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Andy. It's an ethical thing. Uh, he has a problem. Ethical problem with it. Yeah. We got one dislike. I think it was Ronnie. <laughs> oh, Ronnie's trolling us now. <laughs> he probably just disliked it because Andy wouldn't do the impression. Oh, R Ronnie, we love you, mate. Come back, dude. It wasn't that bad. It was worth it. It'd be worth it to have you here if you just came back. Static Ronnie. Ronnie's better than no Ronnie. Yes, yeah. Ronnie, come back. Come oh, back. <laughs> Well, oh, inferno. Remember now. <laughs> Let's see. Barry, Barry had a pretty good question. Uh, five day flipper. He said, uh, "With parts being so profitable, have any of you guys ever thought about selling parts full time?" Oh. I don't know what kind of parts. Uh, you know, I mean, he's talking about. I know I, I saw a lot of like uh, video or not video, but uh, board game parts. Um, for some pretty decent money. I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather part out a board game than sell the actual whole, um, you know, board game itself. But I mean, you know, that's just, that's one thing I part out. I've been looking okay. at, um, I have been watching some of the reseller killers uh, stuff and uh, I've definitely been keeping an eye out for Dyson uh, parts and stuff like that because apparently that's uh, worth some pretty good money. Yeah. So, okay. but, and Deb painting pesos, she sells like appliance parts and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. What How about body? <laughs> stuff. Don't you don't you don't you sell like ankle bones and <laughs> I'll take a good young um, liver if you got one. Weren't you guys big on the ear thing or is that for your collection? I like the teeth. <laughs> um, we, we could definitely do parts full time if we wanted to with what we've got. I mean, this stuff sells. When we've got pieces, we do a lot of parts. Not right now because we're just stacking up our pile of parts that we steal from to make a piece one. Please. Yeah, because we'll have multiples of things. But when it, when it comes down to something we don't see a lot on the next palette, we'll just part out the things. And somebody needs a lid. Somebody needs a knob. Somebody's dog chewed their vacuum attachment piece it's always something somebody will buy it's amazing that people will buy parts because it's just so much cheaper than buying a whole new unit of something so we could definitely do parts for them if we wanted to but it's a lot of a lot more work <clears throat> it's but like remotes broke, too what i say it's like remotes too i was finally one of those people oh, that yeah. spent 35 dollars on a remote because i lost my harman kardon one yeah yep yeah. it's off that's a good thing to keep an eye out for all the time is remotes yeah, good name for the most. You know what I actually did? I actually bought like um, I bought two DVD VCR combos a couple weeks ago. I go to list them, I test them the other day, and they're broken. They don't work, right? So I spent four dollars on both of them. I trashed them. I took the remote. I had one remote and an instruction manual. And I sold it for 15 bucks and it, it sold like yesterday or the day before. Yeah. So remotes, yeah. remotes can bail you out of some bad buys sometimes. You know, right. if you guys want okay. a quick remote ahead, tip, Ray. if you guys want a quick remote tip, if you have anything Sony from about 1991 to like 2012, maybe, I don't know the exact year, you could Google it. Any Sony remote will work, whether it be a TV, VCR, DVD, uh, hmm. stereo receiver. You don't have to input a code between Sony parts. A Sony VCR remote will work on your Sony TV. Um, you can Google the year, but it's a long span. It's like 18 Whoa. years worth of Sony product. You can use one remote per month. 
So ah, I have to that's... read Brian Obrick Picker's uh, comment. He says, we want to, want to, want to Ronnie back. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, Andy. That's another thing, too, is um, chargers sell really well, too. Yeah. Really, yeah, really well. So real if you well. can figure out exactly what it went to, um, you know, if it's a charger, you can take off. But chargers to almost anything will sell really well. Or a pit battery a lot, or a power. A lot of the chargers, they end up being, they're heavy. That's, that's the only yeah. drawback with doing a lot of the chargers is they always seem to be like over that one pound mark. But they usually can fit in a small flat rate box or padded envelope yeah. in a box. Yep. So. And then the envelope. You know what sells good? If you see a box of chargers, if you see one that's for a, I know we're doing a bolo show now, right? We yeah. see one that says uh, Razor, like the the Razor scooters. Yeah, those do pretty good. I bet they. Yeah, were. I actually, I think I found one of those Razor scooters in a storage unit, and it didn't have a charger. There you go. Yeah, so that would that makes sense then. Hmm. So um, Robin said is she was wondering if she was just a bit she was alone in this, but um, she's trying to get her listing count up, but she keeps selling things, and and obviously that's a you know first world problem <laughs> yeah, no, really when you're trying to get, when you're to trying to get your your numbers up, but you keep selling, <laughs> but she's that's her the goals that she has set. So um, yeah, you can't really complain about. You know, sales <laughs> not getting to that. So, but I do understand where she's going there because I I was doing that too. I just I put myself. I was like, okay, I need to. I want to get, you know, two hundred and fifty. Well, but you know, why would you want to do set a goal like that? I think I think the goal, I think a better goal would be to like I want to list on average, whatever the number is a day. Let's say you want to list two or three hundred dollars worth of product per day on average. That would be a more sensible goal because yeah. then you'd still sell your shit, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like going by a dollar value goal too. Not like I want to get three hundred listings. It's I want to up my listing sell through to forty dollars instead of thirty or twenty five. I like that. Yeah, because well, <laughs> if I could, oh I'd, I'd, I'd just sell three sewing machines every month for fifteen hundred a piece and never list anything else. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, let's see who out. Man, there's so many questions that were fire idea. Uh, Lonnie is not working so well. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got the rapid part of it yet. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm sorry. Oh, when, when you were at the beginning, I said the rapid answer, you know, question and answer rapid thing. It's not working today. <laughs> we're way behind on questions because, uh, so. Um, let's see. Uh, that's what we're good at. <laughs> Blah blah blah. Um, let's see. Anybody else see questions that I'm not seeing? Uh, ben G asked about a Sony combo DVD player. When he puts uh, a disc in, it opens and closes, but he has to tap it with the disc in to remove it. And it has a new belt. If you're tapping it and making a bump on it, it has nothing to do with the belt. What it'll be is a little electric motor. The brushes in there have a dead spot, just like a starter. And when you're tapping it, you're probably shaking it enough to cause the motor just to spin enough to move the belt. Man, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, that was on the tip of my tongue too. <laughs> Here's a question from Michael Jackson. Said, "Why doesn't Andy do an impression?" That's what I came for. Because <laughs> I like Ronnie, man. He's, he's a good guy. Ronnie likes it when you do that, Andy. He told me he said know, my favorite part. I know. Part I know. I know. I know. Show. Uh, not tonight. Maybe another night. Anyway. Really? Yeah. Oh well. Okay. Um, I, I'll, 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 I'll give Ronnie a break tonight. <laughs> uh, I did see a Nathan question. has a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. yeah, Nathan has a question. He says it's a stupid question, but I don't know if it's a don't stupid read question. a stupid question, dude. We don't want our show to be stupid. I was just reading it. It's not. <laughs> a stupid question. That's what I said. <laughs> I hate that saying. There's no stupid questions. There's definitely stupid questions. Oh hell yeah, there are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pressure's on me, Nathan. Here we go. Like every question any eBay buyer ever asked, stupid. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> a lot of times. That's for sure. So he says he's going on a cruise um, in the next couple of months, and he's thinking about taking four extra suitcases. 
drifting. And I guess, I don't know, I'm not sure what the question is, but uh, I think that's great. I mean, I think it would be cool to, to thrift, you know, while you're on vacation, uh, especially out of... Uh, uh, I, don't I don't know about out there, though. Not Cozumel. Oh, I don't know. There's a lot Cozumel. of knockoffs. A lot of knockoffs. Mm. I'd be really worried about fakes and knockoffs. I mean, unless you're one of those people with the jacket on the street selling fakes, then I, go for you, it. If you could get away with it, dude, you could buy some great booze, though. <laughs> like, if you want to <laughs> smuggle some booze back and sell, like, booze. A collectible like bottles. Had, yeah, collectible right. bottles. You mm -hmm. great <laughs> booze. All right. Let's see. Um... Actually, if he is going to bring it up, don't bring it to your suitcase because you'll pay duty on it. Just ship it to yourself. Find where the local post office is, just fill the boxes and stuff, and ship it back to yourself. <coughs> Someone asked real early in our little side chat, and I got, I thought it was in our side chat, but they asked what our biggest uh, ROI flip that we've all had. What? Hmm. Like, our like our best flip or whatever, the one that we made our most money off of. For me, I'd have to say it's books, definitely. Really? <clears throat> books. <laughs> Go ahead. Mine used to be cars. It was the sewing machine, the Singer nice. 222K for 1500 bucks. Would you pay for it? Was it free? Or? Uh, it, was, it came out of a storage unit that I was like three, 400 bucks into, and I made that money back off a couple shelves and boxes and dressers so yeah it was pretty it was all profit almost was all set. Oh, almost yeah yeah hmm wow i mean roi clothing's you know clothing is a pretty big roi item to sell i think mine would personally have to be probably shoes in general um i mean what i tend to do is i like to go to thrift stores and get a, like find pairs of nikes and they look kind of bad, but the fabric's okay, and you can clean them up really good. And usually, if they the worse they look, the better the price they are. I bought cool. some. Uh, I bought some gold a couple of months ago for I can't remember how much. It was like five bucks or something. Uh, nice. But and then I bought like I mean, d dude, I could go on and on, but I don't know what the highest mm -hmm. ROI is. But uh, plenty of times I bought stuff for twenty five cents, fifty cents a dollar, and, you know, sell it for a hundred or more, you know, a mm -hmm. couple hundred yeah, tops. It, it's you like two hundred X is probably a typical garage sale home run type number, I would say. I mean, I haven't found anything crazy like buy one thing and turn it into. 10 grand or 20 grand like i've never found no. nothing like that ever Me neither right i've made five plus grand off cars but you're you're putting five to ten grand out to make like right. you know you can spend 10 grand to make three grand on that car so it's not it's not as good of roi as the free sewing machine it's more money but way more out. killers are being quiet on this one they don't like this question <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of we've had some really good ones Hey, there's, I think there's a one that stands out because it was really cool was a ship's, it's a ship's plaque. It was a World War II battleship and each ship gets a plaque that tells, we call it the date of Leyden. You know, it's basically when the ship's being built, mm. when it went into service. And there's one for each ship and it's, it's heavy, it's really freaking cool. We got it off Shop Goodwill. Yeah, got it off Shop Goodwill. Nice. $75 in San Diego, and it sold for a little over 2000 to a school. It was either in Connecticut, Rhode Island, or someplace like that, but it was a military academy, and I think it was like a preparatory school, and the guy that ran, or it was the commodore of the school, he had some kind of connection with that ship, and I don't know if there's a family connection or whatever, and they bought it. The school bought it for him. And they presented it to him. So that one. That was an item we had on listed for a long time too, and we kept it kind of high, just because we yeah. thought it'd have to be that specific buyer, and it was. And they so. came, and we had tons of offers on it all the time. That was a big on. flip. But I think 
to me, the, the, I mean, that was awesome, obviously. But one time we were, we were driving home, and it was on a Saturday, and through our neighborhood, just a few houses down, there was a garage. This guy was bringing stuff out for his garage sale, and he had tables. It was real pristine. And so we stopped real quick, and he had um, shortwave radios, and they were really clean. Know nothing about this stuff, by the way. We're not – and this is early on when we started doing this. And then he had camera equipment. And then when we got out, we start talking to him, and he was he had moved from Reno, and he had worked at a news news um, the news station down there, and he was a do videos and stuff like that. And he was came here and he started working at the casino and running the ba the bingo room. And so him and Steph they struck up a conversation because she loves bingo. And he's nobody's there yet. Like we had just pulled up, there's nobody around. And I'm looking at this stuff, and he had this radio. He was probably sixty something years old. And he had a radio that belonged to his dad. And it was pristine. And it had like notes in it. It was a, I guess they would write down in this log like certain frequencies or whatever. And, and then he had all this camera equipment and he was a photographer. And I'm looking around and then cars started coming up and I said, how much for everything? And he just, just started getting busy. And he goes, I don't know, I didn't think about it. I go, how much for everything? And he says, 300. I go, I'll take it all. And we just started, and we still, we literally was like, hope this is good. And he had tons of cameras. We load everything up and we go home. And the first thing I check is this, this one camera. I can't think of the name right now. It's made in Japan. And it was real fancy. And it was just, he had manuals with everything. And I looked it up and I was like, oh boy. And it was selling for over $1,000 all day long. Oh, I mean, wow. there was multiple sales. Oh, wow. And I was like, Check this out, Steph. Hope this guy's another sale. Yeah, I was just like, look at this camera. And we just let it, everything else was sitting around. And we had a ton of stuff from him. So I listed it, and it sold immediately to a guy in Japan. And I listed, I listed it for $1,800. So it sold immediately. And then I was like, this is so easy. Yeah, reselling like, so easy. Just <laughs> hey, and I can't think of the name of the, I want to say he had two radios. One was a Trans America, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that was the name. That but was. The first one listed it, sold for eight hundred dollars, like like right now. And then another one, it sold for like five hundred dollars. And then there was, he had pieces like Lynn. It was unbelievable. And we honestly were we were so like, we have to do this stuff all the time. <laughs> and it, I haven't it, seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it hasn't happened again. But it was just like, <laughs> it was such a beautiful thing because it was. He's our neighbor. We just pulled up on it. Nobody's there. And we just said, we'll take it all. And man, that was That's freaking fun. awesome. The best, best ever. Not just dollar amount. It was just so freaking cool. And the items were really cool. Yeah. Sorry it took so long. Yeah, sorry it took so long, but it, no, no, it's, a good, it's a good story. Oh, like, and Craigslist Hunter says, uh, I want to talk about this. Home runs don't matter. You can't build your business on them. And yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Like, like y'all are talking about that. And y'all, I've never heard that story before. Y'all make your living on pots and pans. That's where the that's where the living is made, right? right. But but you know, I gotta say, like the home runs, you, you don't make like your your bread and butter items is where you make all your money. But sometimes the home run items are the ones are the search for the home runs. That's what keeps you going. That's what makes you wake up at six in the morning and getting out there in the cold or whatever you gotta do. The home runs are what we're searching for. But the bread and butter is what gets it done, right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. it's always. Yeah. Um, you know, to to go out and look for those those uh, things that make you, you know, hundred or two hundred times your money. But, but yeah. yeah, when it comes down to it, base hits win games. So. Yep, that's right. And to be honest, for me, like when I've hit my home runs, it's been when I least expected. It. It's just walking through a thrift store and something catches my eye. And I look down, and I don't even know what it is, and I research it because I'm a little bit curious. And then it's sell. I mean, and it's it's a big home run. That's awesome. What's Tanya's? I think she's probably got some monster one. Like a home run? Yeah. What's your biggest home like run, Tanya? Piece of jewelry, whatever it was. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can never remember. <laughs> But I think it was a bracelet or a necklace I had found. 
that I sold. I want to say it sold for about twelve or fifteen hundred wow. on eBay. But there was a time, a long time ago, I found a twenty-two carat uh, gold chain at a thrift store. I think I paid a, like a couple bucks for it, and this was a long time ago. And I put it up on eBay. It was before I didn't really know anything about jewelry. And then um, somebody sent me a best offer for four hundred dollars. And I'd never wow. seen money like that on eBay before. And so, of course, <laughs> like an idiot, I accepted it. And I'm sure it was worth so much more. I just didn't know any better at the time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I've told my story before. Mine was the uh, Spectrum Analyzer that I sold to a guy in Brazil. Um, I made the most money on it, and I made the biggest mistake on it. And uh, I, I was kind of a... The whole thing was a, a learning experience. Um, I believe I bought it for between fifty and a hundred dollars, and I sold it for twenty-two hundred. I think twenty-two hundred dollars. I think that's what it was. Um, but uh, like the problem that I had with it is, uh, I severely underestimated the shipping cost, like by five hundred dollars, um, because it was so big, um, and Brazil actually. They won't accept things a certain size. That's their customs. Uh, their customs group won't accept something that's too big. You have, so you have to cut it down or ship it freight, and that's even more. Uh, yeah, it was like, no, I think it was only $460 that I missed it. The, uh, so I didn't make all the money that I thought I was going to make, but I did make a, a pretty good chunk. Yeah, that's a nice chunk of change there. Yeah, right. So. Different. Turn of their what? What about you, Andy? Did you you say your biggest one? No, I did. Uh, man, uh, really, my biggest one. I mean, it's been like huge, but uh, it's pretty much it's like the new sealed Sony stuff, man. Uh, that or uh, uh, like the laser jet toner cartridges. I know here not long ago I picked five of them up for uh, thirty five bucks, and I flipped them for five hundred in like real quick. Wow. So I mean, you know, that was. You know, like those, uh, you know, like those little Sony uh, micro cassette recorders. I know I grabbed mm -hmm. one of those the other day for I think it was around seven bucks, and I flipped that for about one seventy five. So I mean, that was, you know, it was, it was pretty good, pretty good hit. You know, not a, you know, hold on, but you know, nothing that, nothing crazy. But yeah, definitely, uh, I, I love that uh, in, the those inkjet toners, man. Them things are, uh, them things are always gold. I, I but to find a whole bad. bunch of them at once was great. Dude, I think I think ink toner, I think laser toner is the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. The laser toner. That's what it was yeah, the laser toner. I think yeah. it's the absolute yeah. best thing you could sell. Like sealed so laser toner. Yep. yep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You get the good HP ones, man, they're always a hundred, yes. hundred and a quarter, you know, something like that. They I mean they're they and can you can sell usually get them for like super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the, the ones that the ones I grabbed, I mean they were gone in like just lickety split. I mean, they were gone super quick. You buy one every three months at the storage, just because so many invoices are printed out of there, it just burns through them. And we bought yeah. a no-name one once for like forty-five bucks and non-HP, and it was gone. It was like end of the month. It was pooch. It didn't work anymore. So it's on. It's not even worth it. Buy two months. Man, we're getting a lot of static here, aren't we? Everybody okay. hearing something? Was me, man. Yeah. I was like, oh, I man, man. I'm not sure who it was. <laughs> Is Ronnie back in here or what? Did Shane tell us? Did Shane tell us his? Uh, I don't know, Shane. Did you? I don't I think, think it's so. Jory. I think it's okay. Jory. I mean, I haven't had like any huge, like I have never, you know, probably sold anything over four hundred. So, you know, um. I haven't had like any huge, but I've had high ROI. I mean, I just sold, and I know um, mm -hmm. Bonnie and everybody's probably gonna get sick, and and Andy, they're all gonna get sick of hearing about these damn shoes. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I bought them for a dollar ninety nine at a thrift store and flipped them on Instagram for two hundred and sixty. Oh, yeah, nice. And then I've sold concert T-shirts for a hundred and up, um, hundred and hundred and I think the for concert T-shirts, I think my highest sale on them is like 150 maybe well a andy that, that's probably your concert t-shirt story that's probably one of my higher flips too is like yeah I you bought, had some, you had some really good ones yeah i bought dude like i bought like <clears> 10 <throat> and look idaho hillbilly's in here i'm actually holding my idaho hillbilly little knife right here 
Nice. <laughs> he sells. He sells these. Awesome. He made yeah. Idaho hillbilly and uh, Miss Kitty made this knife. But uh, yeah. now I don't know why I'm holding it. But I was doing. You, you like Lonnie, I think I think my favorite concert shirt I seen on that video you made a, a while back ago was that Lollapalooza T-shirt. I think I think the other one was better. Um, the one uh, oh man, Krillin's gonna kill me. I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's the one no no man with an no man with a good car. Go, like, oh, geez. What is the name? Uh, ministry. It was ministry. Oh. But I had like I had like four shirts from that lot that sold for I had two that sold for 150. Had another one that sold for 120. Had another one that sold for a hundred. These are all shirts that I paid three dollars a piece for. Oh yeah. Wow. It was incredible. Hey, Lonnie. Hey. How much did you sell that Tesla jacket for? <laughs> oh. Well, you, you'll have to go. You'll you'll have to watch. <laughs> well, what did I pay and what did I get? I paid nothing and I got nothing. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. But, it's very true. But the American sure. Cancer Society got four hundred dollars. So yeah, that was, that was nice. 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 I think it's exciting if you, like with with reselling, not doing the pallets and stuff, because that's just, that's like your Lonnie was saying, that's bread and butter. But if you buy something for a dollar, sell it for $20, you get, a, you get the opportunity to have an adrenaline rush every time you go out thrifting. And that's freaking awesome. You just stumble upon stuff and it can be something that's like just a mundane piece of nothing. And you're looking at it and you go, oh, I'm gonna make $50 on this thing. And that's an, to me, that's exciting. It's adrenaline rush, like a modern day panning for gold. Yeah. Oh, I agree well, with I you. That's if, my, for any, uh, if any major company made the margins that we make, yeah. I mean, oh, they would rule the world. Yep. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. seriously. On a used yeah. item. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, I you know, that's, if, that's if, that's if a big company makes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Shane. Oh. I, I was just going to say, I like that on Steven's step, because I think that's what keeps me sharp, is that go, that treasure hunt. It's that looking for what is hard to find, the rare item. Yeah. So who's got the feedback now? I think Steven, it's Jory. I thought it, I thought yeah. it was Steven Steph, so I muted them. You're going to have to unmute yourself, Steve. Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I was I doing some that testing. Was us. So we were trying to fix it. Yeah, I muted me and it was still happening, so I don't think it's me. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I just muted myself and everything was loud. I muted mine and moved the wires all around. So I don't hear it. Mute story, let's see. Let's see. Maybe it's me. All this fancy equipment and it's Jory. It's Jory. It is Jory. <laughs> 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 I when you sell something that was yours and it sold for a lot, that's always fun. More than you probably paid for it. Oh yeah, but yeah. something that like old something that yeah. you already had, and you're like, yeah, I should throw this on, and then it sells for a lot. That's fun. Yeah, I agree. yeah. Awesome. like I don't I know about y'all, but I never think that my things are valuable. Like I just <laughs> never do, and they are. You know, you should take the time to look into it, but lots of times I don't. I get the most yeah. excited when I discover not whenever I like make a home run, but when I discover a new niche. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, like fun. definitely because that's one that'll pay off week after week after week. Like I didn't know to buy Bibles this time last year, you yeah. know, yep. and now I just buy Bibles and I make money off of them. And it's like very exciting because now like when I see a Bible, I just buy it and I know mm -hmm. I'm going to, yep. you know, it's like this gift that keeps on giving, giving, giving and, you know, Bibles <laughs> and baseball gloves. I didn't used to sell and all kind of other stuff. That's what gets that. I love that. And more yeah. your arsenal, huh? Mm -hmm. And you're learning constantly. You learn yes. not just about the selling aspect, but you find something, you do the research, you start learning about that item, the history. It might lead you into other areas. I mean, it's exciting. Yep. Yeah, it exactly. is. Well, and a lot of Drink. my stuff I've learned off of YouTube. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and it's real funny how you'll watch a video. And it's gonna be <laughs> on a sales update. You see that? <laughs> it's like an update, and then you go out <laughs> at a thrift store and you find the exact item. 
Pete, Pete says we're sharing. I hate all of you. Share all the secrets. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to admit, since I mean, we haven't been doing YouTube very long, but we've had some of our subscribers who have written us and said, you know, I saw you talk about this or this or whatever, and they've told us some awesome bolos, just things yeah. that I'm totally yeah, looking exactly. for on Offer Up, and I look for every day, like, Bob Revolution Strollers. Alexis just told us to look for those. And I've been looking for those. I've been making offers, low, low offers on them. I'm going to start flipping those. Those sell for a lot. So look for those, you guys. Um, there's some weird high-end cookware that I've heard about that Deb told us about. And there's been all kinds of stuff yeah. where I had no idea. I've never looked for them. And I'm finding stuff on our local apps just to sell on eBay yeah. or whatever. So Or sell resell locally that they didn't list it well. It's awesome. Yeah. And that's people that do not have a YouTube channel. Yeah, They're just regular people wanting to help Cheers somebody up. out yeah and there you know there's more than enough to go around they just want to help a killer out right that's yeah, right, right. Help, a killer out. <laughs> help, a, help a killer out help. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so i guess it's about uh, an hour and a half in well a little bit more than an hour and a half so uh last question somebody wants to get in before we get out of here and let you guys go about your evening I have a question okay everybody real quick raise your hand if you've been to jail does the drug <laughs> <laughs> I plead the fed her grandma might be watching she can't tell these stories that's right uh -oh. does the drunk tank count it's kind of in New Orleans. Hell yeah, it does. No, it wasn't. But I almost assaulted a police officer in New Orleans because they were undercover. They came beelining it to my brother. We were on an alley. He was underage. And I thought they were coming to jump us because they came like rushing towards us, no badges. And I cocked both fists. And right as I cocked the fist and put it back, he pulled a badge out. And he was like, New Orleans Police Department. <laughs> we wow. didn't see ID. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, my bad. <laughs> so uh, in the end, my brother got an underage drinking ticket. He. We wow. almost had to fly back for a court date, but they settled on some price. And, you know, wow. Jory, Jory was hit a newer that police officer. When you assault a police officer in Canada, they apologize. I accidentally hit a police officer in Canada, and I was let off. We got in a big fight outside of a bar, and uh, my buddy got jumped. I pulled the guy off him, and someone grabbed me by the shoulders like this. I didn't know who it was. I didn't want to get beat up, so I threw an elbow back as quick as I could. And when I turned around, I saw an officer doing one of these blood coming out of his nose. I instantly wow. put my hands up. I laid right on the ground, and I'm, I didn't mean to. And they arrested me, and the cop with the, the bloody nose talked to me for a good while, and, and uh, I wasn't charged with it. And it was none of us were charged for the assault because we got jumped by three or four guys. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Jory, you need to write a book. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. What? Yeah, he's done this shit in, in Canada? I've done in mine. Yeah, no, I got a son. I, know, I, worry, I worry how my son's going to be now. <laughs> I've never been charged. I've never been charged with a crime. I don't have any uh, like priors or anything like that. And I only got arrested for being really drunk in Grand Bend, which is like a big party of each town when I was underage. They put me in the drunk tank and it sucked and smelled like pee and I had to stay in there all night. I mean, I've, I've, I've been to jail, but I've never been on the wrong side of the bars. Does that count? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I've been in <laughs> <laughs> I was driving a stripper van in New York City with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't know it was a, a stripper van, but... There was a Tootie bar on the corner. Tootie yeah. bar. Oh, God. Pittsburgh <laughs> Big Pick says, uh, the jury assaults cops. Tootie bar, stripper. Van. That's like my and, new... And, and I like illegally export food and booze. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> you criminal. You guys aren't going to see me on the next show. <laughs> to see you on cops. <laughs> Running hey, down. Hey, Jory's Jory. the youngest. He's got the craziest pass. Jory, yeah. you need to live stream from a Toonie bar one time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try, but you get kicked out pretty quick for bringing a camera into a strip club around here. I learned that one the hard way, too. Seriously? <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, yeah, they'll drag you right out. I think that's my new favorite word since Jory said it on the last Tootie couple bar. shows. Is I love bar. it too. I love Tootie it too. Bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's let's, let's wrap this up. Um, 
Uh, we learned uh, not a lot. We learned a lot about can Canadian cops and and, <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> how to assault an officer and get away with it. And uh, <laughs> but no, it's been good. Um, who's uh, who's uh, channels it on next there, Lonnie? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea who who's up. Oh, no, I went last weekend, I think. Okay. Uh, let's see. Andy, when did you go last? A couple weeks ago. Okay. Then Shane, when did you go? Oh. I think it might. Is it, is it around to me already? I think so. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I've only went once, I think. Yeah, but did, okay. So you went, I think you went <laughs> after I did, right? I can't remember. I think it was after you, Lonnie. So I think it's you and then maybe me. Okay. All right. We'll We'll go with that. Yeah, uh, we'll go. You okay? All right, cool. I guess we could do this uh, off air. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Andy, Andy, do the impression. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We have oh, to do it. Oh, y'all killing me, man. Bang. A swan song. Oh, pickles, y'all. That was a good one. <laughs> hey. uh, Andy, you should like totally like just. Just make that like the intro to your YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, killers! Thanks oh. for joining us. I really, I really appreciate y'all joining. It was fun having y'all. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having sure. us. Absolutely. All right, guys. Uh, oh, if there's yeah. no other uh, questions or anything, anybody on the board got anything? All right. I guess we will see you guys next week. Have a good one. See ya, Bye, everyone.